So with this super rapid development and everything that's coming out with artificial intelligence and the crazy stuff that's going on with all this technology, the Black Mirror style world we're in right now, that one, these are five cases that were solved in unique ways using AI. So the first is the murder of Shaquana Marie Caldwell. In June of 2017, Maryland police responded to a call about somebody having discovered a body. What they found was pretty badly decomposed remains hidden beneath a tarp. The medical examiner later found that the body they found belonged to a female, approximately around 20 years old, and that they definitely suspected foul play. Initial efforts to determine this Jane Doe's identity had failed. So the county police contacted Parabon Nano Labs to request that they could use the company's snapshot DNA phenotyping service. They would then use this to generate a likeness of the victim. They then sent the DNA analysis back and this indicated that the victim was African-American ancestry with brown to dark brown skin, uh, brown eyes, black hair, and no freckles. A man named Tom Shaw, a certified forensic artist, at Parabon performed a facial reconstruction from the victim's skull and digitally combined this with the DNA prediction in order to generate an image of how the victim may have looked when she was alive. Shortly thereafter, the Baltimore City Police contacted Sergeant Price and advised him that there were several similarities between this victim and a woman who'd gone missing in Baltimore. That woman was Shaquana Caldwell, who was 26 and was last seen on the 14th of May in 2017, so about a month before the body was discovered and she was declared missing after her family and friends hadn't seen her for several days. The victim was positively ID'd as Shaquana in November, about five months later. This quickly led to the arrest of Terrace Codwell, who was her boyfriend. Now, Shaquana's family had been suspicious of her boyfriend for a good while. He subsequently did confess to the murder, and get this, he had also been just released on parole after serving 17 years of a 30-year sentence for the death of another woman in 1998. Stand-up guy. Let's do the next one. Starts in 2010, and this one was actually recommended to me by a person who commented on my video, so thank you so much, and this is so interesting. There was a man who had sexually assaulted two teenage girls at Knife Point near Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and this happened in a storage area under their apartment while they were locking up their bikes, and then a third girl was also attacked but managed to escape. So they developed something brand new, a hologram, a life-size hologram of the suspect that had been evading police and evading identification for over a decade at this point. The hologram was shown on television screens and also displayed in what's called a hollow box to people walking through shopping malls and shopping centers. Everyone could see this in real time. They thought maybe it would be easier to recognize him because it's a life-size presentation of the suspect. You can see him move, you can see every detail of his body in real life, in real size, in real time compared to the drawings that we that they had made earlier in the investigation and photos this is much more recognizable to people the overall effort actually ended up producing over 300 tips from the community and one of them led to the arrest of a 52 year old man who was determined to be the perpetrator so successful and i just think that's really really cool so next this happened in china and this one is unbelievable this one is t t terrifying some, actually, some Chinese social media users said that this case was too gruesome and too far-fetched for a horror movie. And another wrote, I never thought that the facial recognition process could be used this way. So, this man named Zhang, a 29-year-old man living in China, tried to apply for a loan using an app called Money Station. Money Station uses artificial intelligence to verify the applicant's identity and then asks them to wink to help the process along. So, basically, it does use facial recognition like you do on your phone, and it's like wink, and it moves the process along trying to identify, you know, if you match what, who you're supposed to be. So, he does this on his girlfriend, who is no longer alive at that point. Then, when the facial recognition technology found that there were no signs of eye movement, it raised some red flags. The staff at the company conducted a manual review of this footage, and they saw that there were bruises on the woman's face and then a thick red mark around her neck. The voice recognition software on the app also determined that the voice was male rather than female. This is when they contacted police. Once police were tipped off about this super weird and unsettling situation, they went to find Zhang, and they found him. All right, he was caught by police while 
literally in the process of trying to burn the body on a remote farm. After his arrest, it was announced that he was suspected of strangling his girlfriend with a rope on April 11th after they argued about money and he'd threatened to leave him. He then allegedly went on the run with the body hidden in the trunk of a rental car. He texted her employer asking if she could take the next few days off of work. So he's also accused of using the victim's phone to take over 30,000 won or around $4,200 US dollars from her bank account and then lying to her parents saying that she was going to be going away for a few days to relax. So the next one, number four, this was in 2019 in California. A law enforcement officer saw a social media post about a missing child from the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. The officer took a screenshot of the image, which she later fed into a tool that was created by a nonprofit company called Thorn, and they help investigators find underage sex trafficking victims. The tool is being called Spotlight, which is so cool. And it uses text to image processing algorithms to match faces and other kind of clues, so things in the background, certain specific items that might be in the picture, to match with anything in other places online. All kinds of footage. Everything from online ads to online pictures to social media to the dark web to anything you can imagine. It scans it all and it tries to find a match for a face. So the officer plugged this photo of this missing girl into Spotlight and it returned a list of online sex ads featuring the girl. This officer taking this initiative to upload this photo had actually led to them being able to find her and save her life and help her get away from this horrendous trauma I can't even imagine. So number five, and this one's interesting because this one it's on the flip side of catching criminals. AI has also proved to be helpful in absolving innocent people from being suspects as well. So Andrew Conlon was sitting terrified in the passenger seat of a two-door 97 Ford Mustang, out riding with his friends past the rows of palm trees warm night in Fort Myers, Florida. As Mustangs are no stranger to joy rides, uh, this was no exception, and Andrew's friend, who was apparently inebriated and distraught, was driving approximately over 100 miles per hour down the road on a road 35 mile per hour speed limit. He was occasionally swerving onto the other side of the road to pass cars that were going the speed limit, and Andrew said he remembered thinking at that moment, someone's gonna die tonight. That's when his friend hit a curb at a speed of over 100 miles per hour and lost control of the car. Andrew blacked out. The car spun out of control, completely hitting a light pole and three palm trees before coming to a stop finally. The passenger's side was backed up against a tree. When Andrew came to, his friend was gone. The car was on fire and his seatbelt buckle was jammed. Terrifying. But luckily, a good Samaritan, a man in a bright orange tank top, intervened, prying open the driver's side door and pulling Mr. Conlon out of the burning vehicle, so across the center of the car, so across the glove box and through the driver's side door from the passenger seat. So unfortunately, Andrew wasn't able to ask the man his name that night and the police hadn't gotten his name either. The police found his friend, unfortunately, had passed away after being ejected from the car. And Andrew knew this good Samaritan had saved his life, but he didn't know that he would need this man to do it again. Not until November 2019. Almost three years after the accident, Andrew was charged with vehicular homicide in the death of his friend. Prosecutors said that Andrew was the one who had been recklessly driving his friend's Mustang and that he was therefore responsible for the accident and for his friend's death. He was looking at 15 years in prison. The only way to prove that he wasn't the one driving was to find the man who pulled him out of the passenger seat from the burning car that night. The police actually had talked to the Good Samaritan that night and recorded the conversations on their body-worn cameras. So they had footage of this man. They had him on video saying, the driver got ejected out of one of the windows. He's in the bushes. I just pulled out the passenger. He's over there. His name is Andrew. They could also see on this footage that the man's entire left arm was covered in tattoos. He had on a bright orange tank top with the words event security on it. And thankfully, a company called Clearview AI actually granted Andrew's lawyers special access to their facial recognition database with over 20 million faces. Arguably the best known and most controversial facial recognition company in the world. The grab we took from Zoom. Clearview is essentially a search engine for faces. Here's another amazing one. Here's you out there in the background of another photo, right? Oh um, and it shows faces the 
the power of the technology. Oh my goodness, uh, see that one? That one's amazing. That is extraordinary that it's picked me out of a crowd like that. I mean, that is ex that is incredibly powerful. I, I didn't quite realize how powerful this was. Wow. Which is pretty phenomenal when you think about this is searching over 20 billion images. If you're watching this, your face is probably in this system as well. Then they used the officer's body-worn camera footage from the night of the accident. And in two seconds, just like that, they found a picture of the same man in a club in Tampa. The match was identical, down to the tattoos on his arm. The website where this photo had appeared did not actually give the name of the man though, but it did give the name of the man he was with. So they contacted him on Facebook, they found that man on Facebook, and then they got the name of the man who had rescued Andrew from the burning car five years earlier, and his name is Vince Ramirez. Now this is a quote from him, he said, I was afraid the car was gonna blow up. I pulled open the door, jumped in, and pulled him out from the passenger's seat. It was a real adrenaline rush, and I'm so grateful they did find me. I don't want some innocent man to be sent to prison for something that he didn't do. So that is one with a happy ending, and it also shows us that, you know, this technology is not only useful for law enforcement and for prosecuting criminals, but also for defenses and defense cases. So this is kind of the flip side, and I mean, it's still a very sad story. It's really unfortunate about his friend, and it's so sad, but I guess it had a better ending than it otherwise would have. Now, I want to talk about one more bonus, bonus at number six, and this is hilarious. I mean, it's not funny by any means. It's horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. This man is a monster, but it's funny. You'll see why I said that. And you might have heard about this case. This has gone pretty viral, but Anna Walsh was unfortunately, allegedly, murdered by her husband, Brian Walsh. And I don't know what it is with Brian's. I mean, I don't know if we should trust any Brian's at this point. I mean, we've got Brian Laundry, Brian Koberger, Brian Walsh, like... No offense if your name is Brian, please don't kill me, just saying. And so Brian Walsh, who allegedly murdered his wife, just went into court and they read to him and to the court his search history. And here are the contents of his Google searches. On January 1st at 4.55 a.m. he said, how long before a body starts to smell? And then how to stop a body from decomposing? How to bind a body? 10 ways to dispose of a dead body if you really need to. This man was looking for a BuzzFeed article about the 10 way, ten ways, if you really need to. Not, not, like, if it's, if it can wait, like, but if you really need to, like, these are probably the 10 best ways to dispose of your wife's body, since you really need to. How long for someone to be missing to inherit? Uh, can you throw away body parts? What does formaldehyde do? How long does DNA last? A long time. Can identification be made on partial remains? Dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. How to clean blood from a wooden floor. January 2nd, 12.45 p.m. Hacksaw, best tool to dismember. Can you be charged with murder without a body? Can you identify a body with broken teeth? January 3rd, what happens to hair on a dead body? What is the rate of decomposition of a body found in a plastic bag compared to on a surface in the woods? Can baking soda make a body smell good? Literally like your refrigerator, you know how you put, I guess, a baking soda box back there? He's like just gonna set that next to the body. I This is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I don't know how this man thought that this wouldn't ever come up, and I also don't understand. He literally laid out everything for everyone, the whole process, his whole, like, it's so creepy and unsettling, and this man deserves to rot in hell. Do not get me wrong. This is just the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Probably the stu- If I were sponsored by a VPN, this would be a great time to say it, but I'm not. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Be safe out there. Defendant Googled using his son's iPad. Some of his searches are as follows. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose dispose of a dead body if you really need to. <clears throat> at 6.20, there were also more Google searches on January 2nd. At 12.45 p.m., uh, Cap saw the best tool to dismember. At 1.10 p.m., can you be charged with murder without a body? Can you identify a body without, with broken teeth? On January 2nd, 